Hey guys, Jordan here. In this video, I'm gonna be responding to a YouTube question that I feel it was more appropriate to do on video and it's easier to kind of explain and kind of show um, or just respond to it. So anyways, this one's from Trimotion Media. Thanks for the comment. Actually, I checked out your YouTube channel. You had a, you have some great uh, real estate videos on there. So if people are interested in looking at, sometimes it's hard to find good real estate videos. You can check out Trimotion Media's YouTube channel. Uh, I actually liked your video on the wine country one. So anyways, cool video. Love your lighting setup and your face cam props to doing some videos of your BT at behind the scenes. They're entertaining and to watch and I've learned a few tricks from you. But I must say I know that HDR editing, uh, but your end result is not very good regarding interiors. Seems like a lot of wasted time and effort. Um, maybe I'll stop there and kind of edit it or sorry answer this piece by piece that might be the easiest way but yeah i recommend beginners start with hdr photography because i feel like it's the simplest type of real estate photography where you can get an acceptable result for your customers and where a photographer is not having to try to manage 50 different uh variables at once whether that's lighting um, all the camera settings um, not that you're going to shoot in auto but we have kind of a, a, a set uh, settings where our photographers aren't having to mess with the camera so much um, from room to room where they can really focus on the thing that i feel like new beginner real estate photographers struggle with and that is composition, just getting good composition. And I think that, you know, making sure that your high pot, your tripod height is correct. Um, so me, you know, I run a multi-million dollar real estate media business. I'm the owner and founder. I've been doing this for over eight or almost eight years now. And uh, so I've trained several people. And that seems like to be the variable that most people um, struggle with at the beginning, right? is getting correct composition, you know, their tripod height. So what we do is we remove as many variables as possible to train them as simple as possible to where they, they can master the basics of real estate photography. And then once they do, then you can consider adding additional variables if you want to based on the product that you want to deliver to your customers. Obviously, if you're spending a whole bunch of time on the editing process, you know, if you're doing flambient, you might have to charge more than what a photographer does down the street so there's a lot of variables at play based on like how much time and effort you're going to be spending into your edits what does your team dynamic look like we currently shoot 500 oh, actually over 500 it's actually over 700 but i just say over 500 uh, we've been doing over 500 uh properties a week for the almost the entire year, almost every single week. There's a few weeks where we dip below 500, but um, you know we do a lot, so we manage a lot. But yes, we do try to reduce as many variables as possible to deliver a consistent result, even if some people's uh, opinions is that it's a subpar product, I guess. Anyways, that's my two cents on uh, teaching HDR photography to beginner real estate photographies. Uh, but let's see. Let me continue. Might as well go through and do single exposure. Now, I've tested single exposure. It's not as good. You can probably get away with it on most exposures, but there are some times where there's not as much detail in the shadows and the highlights. And also, if you're doing a single middle, middle exposure and you boost in shadows at 100%, even on a Sony ARW file, even at ISO 100, sometimes there's some interesting things in the shadows. It becomes more grainy. It's just a better result in my opinion, to bracket and do HDR. We do have a pre-HDR, which does bring in a little bit more detail. But anyways, I'm not gonna get into all those details. Um, but yeah, might as well shoot single exposure. You could, you know, and do a negative 100 plus uh, 100 shadows and then do some white balance tuning and get the same results. Um, there are a lot of other options such as outsourcing or doing a lot of your own editing uh, in Photoshop and Ambient. We actually, uh, we have our own editing team. I think we, we currently have eight full-time editors on our team, but yeah, we teach them how we want uh, our photos edited. But yeah, you can spend a whole lot of time doing all kinds of methods. You mentioned uh, Ambient, 
flam or Photoshop with ambience. You can do flam. Yeah. If you just YouTube how to shoot real estate, there's probably a bunch on the flamiant method that seems to be the most popular these days you get a pretty good result but i think some people get too hung up on, on that you know it's all about delivering results to your customers what are, what are their goals what do they want to accomplish yes we do do flamiant method and a higher end luxury outside of hdr within our business for those nicer listings um, obviously cost more there's more time effort and energy that goes into it but on a $150,000 listing or $200,000 listing, the better product for the customer for what they're going to be making on that. And I can talk from, from this from experience because I am a real estate agent as well, is that they don't really want to invest heavily in marketing. They're not going to be making a whole bunch of money. So, But the difference between you know selling a two hundred thousand dollar house shooting hdr versus flambient you know whatever i'm not going to get into it but i'm just saying i've seen out there like a two hundred thousand dollar house that's terrible doesn't look very good and it has the most beautiful window pools of a garbage can outside or something like almost a lot of times not having the crispest windows is actually better in helping achieve the customer's goal so always keep uh, the customer's uh, goals in mind, which we always do. And I've had this thing on my face the whole time. Uh, anyways, that's it for uh, this question. Hopefully that that gave answers and kind of I shared a little bit of my thought process around that. But if you are interested in learning more about the real estate media business, you can check out our free one hour training. The link is in the description. That's going to do it for this video. And uh, reach out if you have any questions. We'll see you guys on the next one.